Good morning. Welcome to our Holy Cross parishioners and a special welcome to all who are visiting. We are pleased to have you join us in our Eucharistic celebration as we celebrate God's presence in our lives on this 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings today begin on page 1191 in the Red Worship Books. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Gagné. Father will be assisted by Deacon Joe Placius. Please join in the entrance hymn, number 897, Mary, First Among Believers. Good morning. Good morning. We begin our celebration of the Holy Eucharist in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our need for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you have the riches of wisdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the living word. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We join in our great hymn of praise as we sing.
let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We call forward our young people who are going to the children's liturgy today. We ask God to bless these children and their teachers as they go forth to break open God's word and apply it to their lives. And may God bless them all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Behind, beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, 
and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt down before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything to follow you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and enter life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. The question that is asked at the end of the gospel is kind of like, what's in it for us? Well, the other day I was at a school advisory meeting and all of the people around the table were talking about their connection with the school. I have a son and a daughter and they go to second grade and fifth grade and all around the table. So it comes to me and I said, I'm Father Gagné and I have 314 children. And that's just a school. 
So it's the point that Jesus was making is the fact that one who enters eternal life becomes part of a family that's far bigger than you could ever have on your own. The gospel presents a very interesting story today that tells us God is worth more than anything else in our lives. It is important that we teach that to our children, not only by word, but by action. Whoever this young man was, he had many possessions. The gospel tells us he seemed to have been of good heart, possessing humility and a positive opinion about Jesus. Without any warning, he literally runs up to Jesus, kneels before him, and asks his question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, since Jesus was always looking for faith in a person, this young man's beginning faith must have impressed Jesus. But Jesus then gives a very strange reply. Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. How does this response fit the question? Well, seeing the seeds of faith in this man, Jesus is trying to grow that faith. The logic of Jesus' response would be, only God is fully good. You have called me good, so you are sensing the godliness in me. We are not told of the man's response, but the story shows Jesus taking him through the essentials. Look, he says, you know all about the commandments, and he names six of them. He expects that the man will say yes, at which point he can lead him further into the love of God. The man says much more, teacher, I have observed all of these from my youth. A wonderful answer. And Jesus' heart was warm, which we know because of the rare line that comes next in the gospel. Jesus, looking at him, loved him, gave him his full attention. Keep in mind that Mark is the shortest of the gospel. Mark doesn't use any unnecessary words. The sentence is startling, like sun coming out on a rainy day. Jesus is not, uh, not announcing truths to someone or other. He is carefully building faith in one whom he loves, faith in God and faith in him. So he tells the young man fondly what the next step is. You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Well, you know, everybody can't do that because if you are going to sell everything you have, who's going to buy it? I oftentimes go to events at St. John Fisher College. I have been also to the funerals of some of my teachers. And on a couple of occasions, I've had, had uh, occasion to meet the Superior General of the Brazilian Fathers. And one day he says to the other priest, John comes to a lot of our things. And he looks at me and says, John, why didn't you become a Brazilian? Well, I said, you know, I gave it some thought when I was in high school, about maybe two minutes. The problem was that I had a paper route and I made $22.50 a week. At 15 years of age, I was already in the stock market, and I wasn't about to give that up for you. <laughs> so not all are called to the vow of poverty, but of course for all of us there is celibacy and obedience. So in the same way, Jesus' little maneuver with this young man didn't work. At that statement, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Like you and like me, he wasn't ready to go all the way. Jesus must have been sad, too, in a way. He speaks to his disciples later, I tell you that it is harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. He then explains to the astonished disciples just what he meant. Simply put, possessions can control your life if you let them. They can become your life and become your identity. They stunt your journey to the highest value that there is in life, and that is God himself. 
Jesus had asked the young man to give up everything and follow him, but the young man is unable to do so. He goes away sad. How do the disciples react? They are not amazed. There's no wows, no cheerleading, no congratulating Jesus on how wonderful he is. No, they are rather stunned. If that is the case, then who can go to heaven? And that's like saying, well, if that's true, then we're all in trouble. But Jesus' answer brings them face to face with their own helplessness, their own poverty, their own limits, and to the searing realization that they don't really have it all together. They haven't figured out things as they think they have. And that paralysis is good because it forces them to wonder, to again take on the helplessness of a child. And remember, we were told in the Gospel just last week that no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless they become like a little child, realizing that God is the father of all of us. When we are amazed, we can fall prey to every kind of superficiality and novelty and trick and ideology. It is the unrecognized face of fundamentalism, the opposite of wisdom. The way of amazement is the way of fundamentalism, the way of letting one piece, one person, be the whole thing. The way of amazement is everywhere in our society. Look at our sports heroes, our rock stars, all kinds of other pop celebrities, and people will say, wow, be my king, be my queen, but soon enough we will say, crucify him, crucify her. What does this gospel say to you and to me? Jesus looks at each one of us like he looked at that young man, and he loves us. And he asks us, can we gradually let go of those things that thwart our response of love? Or must we go away sad? We're happy to welcome to our pulpit today from our stewardship committee, Mr. Doug Escher. The suitcase is back. <laughs> now many of you know what I mean when I say that, but those saying, what's this guy talking about? It reflects on a story I had a friend over, and he was telling us about his daughter. His four-year-old daughter came up to him after dinner and said, Mom and Dad, will you help me pack my suitcase to heaven? And he goes, it's kind of shocking, my four-year-old daughter wanting to pack a suitcase to heaven. But then they realized that she had lost three or four grandparents. The family dog, within the last year, they all died. When we die, where do we go? Heaven. So she wasn't going to get caught short. So she wanted to put in that suitcase the dolls, the toys, and the clothes that she was comfortable with. So it was her material needs that she wanted to take with her. But you know, as, as a child, as Father was just talking, we act like a child, that for us to get to heaven, what we put in our suitcase to heaven is our spiritual deeds. And when I say spiritual deeds, I'm talking about the things we can do to help and serve others the things we may be able to say to help and serve others, or the things we could pray to help and serve others. Those are the things we put into our suitcase. And we have an opportunity through the Catholic Ministry Appeal to live that. Because there are many people out there that need food, clothing, and shelter, and the Catholic Ministry Appeal provides that as we, as we make available our funds. There are tangible results back here at Holy Cross. Last night, Father George celebrated the five o'clock mass. We had uh, seminarians, Michael Merritt and Carlos Sanchez, who are now priests. And we have Deacon Joe Placius as a deacon. The Catholic Ministry Appeal is a financial piece to be able to make that happen. And we certainly have benefited from them gentlemen in their past with us and we appreciate that. There's other ministries in which the Catholic Ministry Appeal supports here. 
and around the diocese. So one way to help in our suitcase to heaven is help fill the Holy Cross suitcase to heaven. Now you're probably wondering why Doug's got a bucket. Well, it reminds me that today I didn't kick the bucket. And some of you may not know, but kick the bucket for us old folks is you die. So as long as I haven't kicked the bucket, I've got a bucket list. And number one on my bucket list is like, we're all here at church and hope to get the blessings for the Lord so we can get to heaven. My number one is get to heaven. And so what can I do today? What can I say today? Who can I pray for today that can make a difference? Living God's will. So that bucket list is important to me because someday and every day I take what I've accumulated, maybe only a drop if I'm lucky, there may be more. It depends on what the good Lord's asked me to do. So the bucket list is, is a critical piece in helping us get to heaven. So where do we go from here? Good news, Holy Cross is alive and well. We are leading parish in the diocese for pledges so far with over 60% of our goal already committed. Yeah. But there may be one or two Buffalo Bills fans in the crowd today, which means it's halftime. The game isn't over yet. We got more work to do. We got two more weeks. And we thank there's been 278 individuals or families that have filled out their pledge card. And this pledge card is only a pledge. The financial part of it is not due to May of 2019. So we got two more weeks. Father Gagné would like to have this completed by the end of this month. And at the rate we're going, that could happen. But all we need is one more pledge. And that's pledges from us as individuals that may not have decided yet on how or if they're going to make their pledge to the Catholic Ministry Appeal. If you could get them in, if you need a pledge card, they're in the pews, see any of the ushers, what have you, they're available. And the sooner we can do that, again, the pledge only, we will then be able to fill our suitcase to heaven. So in concluding, Thank you very much to the 280 and more than 200 more that will make this a success for Holy Cross. Thank you. On the second page, we join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We join in our prayer of the faithful, asking God to hear these, our intentions. For the church, that we may be a witness to Christ's love by practicing charity and promoting justice and peace throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the willingness to share our gifts of time, talent, and treasure with others as a sign of our love for God and for our brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all will come to recognize life as a gift from God and help to build a culture of respect for the life and dignity of each person. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we are generous with all of our gifts, especially those that mean the most to us, and during this time of our CMA, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all of those who are suffering in any way, especially we remember the victims of the flooding in the Carolinas, that God will sustain them, that they will receive the assistance that they need, and that we will keep them close in our heart and prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ will welcome into the kingdom our deceased relatives and friends, especially Patrick E. Dugan, and for William Motel, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful heart, asking that you will hear and answer these our intentions. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collection today is for our debt reduction. Please join in the offertory hymn, number 601 in the green hymnal, All That We Have.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our immutable cause. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offering, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful as celebration we acclaim in song. <laughs> Third Eucharistic Prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrament. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially William, and to all who were pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on us all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power of the Lord are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another now a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Is there anyone at this Mass taking communion to the homebound or to the sick of our parish? Please come to the altar. Before our second graders begin to sing their Go Francis song, we want to thank our Holy Cross Parish. At Holy Cross School, we feel so blessed for the love and support that we receive on a daily basis from Holy Cross Church. So we've decided that once a month, we would like to share some of our love with you by having each grade take a turn to sing after the 10 o'clock mass and to sponsor school coffee hour so you're welcome to come down and join all of us for donuts afterwards we also want to invite you to come to our school masses you are always welcome to join us our next one will be for all saints day it's a 9 30 mass the day after halloween so you are always welcome to join us for school mass we're happy to have 311 students at Holy Cross School. When all of our second graders are here, there are 45 of them, but we are so blessed of all of our students who came here today. went to a church in San Damiano, there he prayed to God. Then one day a voice came from the crucifix and spoke to his heart. And then the voice said, go Francis and rebuild my church, for it is far away. For it is falling. Francis 
Jesus went to fix the church with his bare hands, one stone at a time. Then he realized what God was truly saying, that the church is the people. And then the voice said, go to Francis and rebuild my church. With the Catholic Ministries appeal underway and our goal getting closer, we ask if you have not turned in your envelopes yet, please help us to attain our goal by completing your pledge card and returning it as soon as possible. Thank you for all you do. Our annual Haunted Pasta Dinner will be on October 27th. We are selling tickets this weekend and next after all Masses. If you would like to participate in the Trunk or Treat event following the Pasta Dinner, a permission slip is needed and can be obtained at our website. All slips must be turned in by October 22nd. Please see the bulletin or website for full details on all events happening in our parish community. Please join our second graders in the parish center as they are hosting our coffee hour today. All are welcome. And our recessional hymn will be number 682, You Are the Way. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we apologize for the lack of heat in church. The system that brings the water back from the radiator is broken. We're getting a part this week. So come back next week. We'll have heat for you. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we will not have daily mass in church this week. We'll stay in the parish center until it all gets fixed. Mrs. Martell reminded us that the next school mass is all saints. And as of today, we have two new saints. Uh, I checked the newspaper, of course it's not in there, but there is uh, two new saints as of today, Saint Oscar Romero and Pope Saint Paul VI. We, uh, the church will declare them saints today, they're probably already uh, saints by now, but two new saints that we celebrate next month at the school mass.